So we have a great example today of how uh, time does not flow at a constant rate. The same time today is much earlier than it was yesterday, isn't it? So I'm going to talk, uh, I'm going to extend what Doug said yesterday. Doug gave a great talk yesterday about the past leading up to the present for, of Hadoop. And today uh, I'm going to talk about the present to the future. And of course, as so many people do, I'm misusing the word Hadoop. Hadoop I'm using to mean all of the things around Hadoop, not just that one piece of software. And some fun stuff, uh, we, we need to revise that uh, hashtag, remove the minus sign. There we go. Real-time updates. Uh, there's a hashtag that we'll be looking at later for questions to make it easier than the moving the, the, the microphone around. And there's a URL there which links to a Google Doc where people can take notes in real time. There's an outline of the talk which is only a little bit out of date. And uh, please go ahead and put questions there, put comments. Uh, uh, we'll address that after the, uh, the main part of this talk as well. So people can, can share their their comments, their thoughts, their, their intuitions about what's going on in real time that way. Uh, you guys will be able to see it, I can't. That's even more fun, huh? So where are we now? What is the current state of Hadoop? Well, technically, we are performing well below potential. I've heard people tell me that all through school. Uh, I was doing other things, of course. So on, on this S scale that I've just kind of invented, called the suckitude scale. It's a logarithmic scale. It's the log base 10 of, of how, should, how good should we be divided by how good are we. And so right now our framework, the, the Hadoop framework, the big data framework that most people use, moves data at about one-third to one-tenth, maybe even a little bit less, of how fast it should be given how fast the hardware is. Uh, so that's on the suckitude scale, minus 0.5 to minus 1. The framework itself does small programs, especially, things that would fit in the entire cluster memory at one-tenth to one-hundredth of the speed that it should. So we're kind of minus one and minus two on that aspect. So, so if anybody's keeping score, we're at minus 1.5 to minus three. That's not so bad. Uh, but flow-based programs, things where the output appears as soon as the input appears, we just don't do it. Suckitude minus infinity. Uh, and integration into larger data flows, especially in large corporate settings where you know, they, they've got the pyramids producing data over here and they want their brand new computer over here to hook to them. Well, the pyramids are kind of an early form of computing. Uh, they've been there for a long time. They're difficult to talk to. And that integration aspect of, of big data in, in our world, Hadoop, is poor. We're just not good at that. And th there's another couple of things. But we're probably ra sitting around for the things that would, we would like to do or we, we admit that we would want to do and should be able to do now at about a suckitude minus 5. And some explanation of that. If you look at this, a cluster is a lot of things, but each thing is self-similar, uh, similar to every other, not self-similar. There's network coming in, there's network going out, and there's disky stuff sitting there, and the node itself has memory. And if we look at what these things can do, a typical box for just a small add-on cost, we can put four NICs, one gigabit NICs on the machine, and we can get four gigabits through there, we should be able to get almost 500, let's say 400 megabytes per second through the network. How many people here actually see 400 megabytes per second move through their network connections? Very few. Very close to zero. The disk, on the other hand, a common disk configuration, especially lately, is 12 SATA disks. Uh, they each should do 100 to 150 megabytes per second. So that should be 800 megabytes per second on a single lane of a good P2 
PCIe controller. And if we put two in there, we should be able to get 12 to 1,500 megabytes per second. How many people here have their Hadoop program move 800 megabytes per second on a sustained basis to their disk? Yeah, that minus five is beginning to look kind of real. So the potential volumes uh, in the near future or the present, we should be able to put two 10 gigabit links onto this box. We should be able to move 10 gigabytes per second, or two gigabytes per second through the network, and we should be able to put 12 SATA drives on these, which move 250 megabytes per second. And so each node should be able to drive two gigabytes per second to its disk. Well, I don't need to ask. We don't do that. It, it's absurd to do that right now. But we should. And, and there's beginning to be software, ignore the logo in the lower left, that can actually drive nodes like that. And the, our current state is more like this. We, we have two NICs. We use one somewhat. We get 80 me 50, 80 megabytes per second over the, the, the uh, network connection. And we've got four or more disks, which we use moderately well. And it doesn't matter if we put 12 on there, because we can only move two or 300 megabytes per second. So these are all technical questions. And at the framework level, we have other situations. You know, you've got input, map, shuffle, sort of thing happening. There are other details in there. There's other blocks and so on. But if we draw the actual barriers where we write to disk instead of leave it in memory, because as I said, you know, there's, there's a terabyte of memory on a fairly small cluster anymore, and many, many problems fit in memory. But instead, the input is always stored on disk. So we have a, a big black line there because we have to read from disk. The map always pushes to disk. And then it moves HTTP through the shuffle. And then the shuffle merges are very narrow merges. They write to disk. They shuffle. They write to disk. They shuffle. They write to disk, even for relatively small inputs. And the reducer always writes to disk, which leads to the next program reading from disk. All of these black lines should be optional in our framework. And so those, that's the underpinning of, of where, you know, like in the second grade, we're not living up to our potential. But I have to say that technical problems are easy. I mean, the, the particular technical problem that I work on costs 20 man years of work. Eh, that's money, right? Somebody writes a check. Check writing scales very well in time. The cost to add a zero to the check is not that long. Uh, about the cost is high, but the time required is not very long. And we can convince people to write these checks. And MapReduce 2.0 is coming. So the technical problems really should be solved not so long from now. But there are other problems that are much harder that we have. So here's a provocateur's description of history. Notch had a problem. A small team produced a quick solution. Lots of other people started doing evolutionary changes. And things kind of got out of hand. People started writing these checks. They started scaling their activity. You know, we write code. They write checks. We all understand what we each do. Uh, but then a situation that I call beer on the train happened. I was on a train in England. And that's always an experience for an American to go to a, a train in England because we think we speak the language. We're wrong. We're, we're, we're clearly wrong. In other places, it's much simpler because we know we don't speak. England, we think we do. So I'm sitting there on the train trying not to be foolish. It's not working, of course. Uh, and there was a delay. And if there's a delay in the US, the, you know, when the train is delayed, they mean it's 12 hours late because there's one train a day and so on and so forth. In England, delay means it's five minutes late. It's, it's not quite like Switzerland, but it's not far off. And they get really peeved about delays because they've national or denationalized and everybody's angry about the train system. Five minutes, give me a break. If it's more than 10 minutes, they have to start compensating people. Yeah, that, that, they'll make my life so much better by whatever they do. And so on this train, it was 20 minutes late. They're going to have to do something big, big. And there was an announcement that came on and the man said, 
uh, so sorry, you know, English style apologies, so dreadfully sorry. And in partial compensation for the, you know, the dire effect on your life of being 20 minutes late, free beer is now on sale in the galley. And I'm going, okay, all the words, free beer on sale. I don't speak this language, it's clear. And nobody moves. Nobody in the train moves. So I clearly don't understand what's going on. And I asked the guy next to me, he said, did he say free beer is on sale? The guy goes, yeah. And he gets up and leaves. <laughs> and comes back a few minutes later with two beers. And everybody else kind of goes, I get that. And they immediately leave. The whole car empties immediately. And they all come back with two beers. There was free beer on sale. It was price was zero. Well, zero is a good number. It's still on sale. And that's what's happening right now. That, that's what Hadoop is right now. Free beer is on sale. I'm, I'm one of the people who sells free beer. And people love that. And there's all kinds of ways to sell free beer. Uh, you can even charge money for free beer. Uh, the question is, is where do we go from here? And, and it's a terribly confusing world. It's just like me on the train. What did they just say? Well, yeah, free beer's on sale. And that's leading to some real confusions. Uh, so we, have, we have issues. Uh, big, family, big families always have issues. We have a community, the Apache community. It's a virtue. Uh, user satisfaction up to now is kind of self-fulfilling because if anybody is unsatisfied, they could post a fix. They could satisfy themselves and make things better. But there's a bug as well inherent in that because it assumes that we all pretty much want the same things. That what we want is what somebody else wants and they all are mutually intelligible. And it assumes that we can fix our own problems. But there's big money now involved. Uh, just in the last year or two, uh, I know 9 or 10 million went to one place, 20, 30 million went to another place, 9 million went to another place. Uh, the, the people are working on scaling the check writing quite highly. But probably they're doing a better job than, than Hadoop is scaling. So there's a lot of money involved now. And we're beginning to see Hadoop be adopted by people who can't scratch their own inches, who who think that that is inconceivable, that they would write their own large-scale software or change somebody else's software. Well, they even think of it as somebody else's software. And so there's no single agenda anymore. Some people are in it just to get rich. Some people are in it just for altruistic things. Some people are in it because they were in it before. There's, there's, the understanding is like this. It just goes right past each other. And we have lots of players building lots of different kinds of projects. And so what is community? Um, we have shared values, merit and transparency. We have shared goals, which are kind of like openness, quality, or self-service. We have focus point of contact in the form of Apache mailing lists. Well, kind of focus, because there's umpty million that you have to follow. Uh, we have long-term personal contact. I've been involved in open source since 1976. Doug's been in it forever, too. People know me. People know Doug. People know each other. There's a personal bond there. It, it is like family. I mean, you know your family for a long time. You get to know them well. Members are individuals. That's a really important feature of our community. Uh, there's a sense of trust. Uh, you know, if I say I'll do something this week, people know it'll really happen two weeks from now. But there's some trust that I care about what they want, and I know they care about what I want. And, and so there's that sense of trust there. But what we have now is no longer a community. It's an ecosystem. There are many agendas, and they're not mutually intelligible. When some people say what they want, or if they do even say what they want, it makes no sense. If you stay on Noah Bonhoeff sort of thing. Uh, you know a few of the words, but it, it doesn't make any sense what they say. They explicitly have different sets of values. They really do care about different things. Uh, I know a guy, he's a, 
very successful businessman. And he says, why do people do this open source thing? This makes no sense. It absolutely makes no sense. So what we say to him, he understands nothing. And he says, I understand why I do things. He says, I'm coin operated. That's a good term. It explains his outlook. Well, fine. Uh, but there's a lot of people probably in this room who really don't understand. They understand those words, but they don't understand what that person will do. They can't predict what that person will do in a particular situation. We also now have explicitly conflicting goals. Some people want to own something. Other people don't want them to own it. It's like that. And we have direct competition. There are customers that I would like to pay me money that somebody else would like to have pay them money. And it's the same money. And so the Apache community is now one piece of a much larger ecosystem. It isn't the whole world anymore. The whole world has come to us and joined in, but hasn't really joined in. They're doing something different than we were doing five years ago. And so we have an ecosystem and not a community. And if we pretend that that ecosystem is a community, we will all come to grief. Uh, uh, you know, if commit wars continue, if people say, no, you can't put that in there because it's not mine, uh, or, you know, factionalization, you know, well, I'm going to hold back some stuff and then I'll insert it just at the last minute, uh, or if 101 forks, how many Apache releases of Hadoop are there now? Does anybody actually know how many there are? Uh, th that's just within Apache. How many commercial versions? excuse me, derived from Hadoop, not, of course, Hadoop, because they aren't the same thing. How many of them are there? We don't even know anymore. Uh, there is either no compatibility or there's no way to test compatibility because there is no reasonable answer to that. So in the dark road, you know, if we, if we think of Dante in the middle of the journey of his life, Hadoop found itself in a dark wood. Well, the dark wood ends with Azure and Microsoft or something equivalent taking over. Most people probably don't remember the 80s and 90s and the early 2000s, but that was a bad world because the people who controlled the world really didn't share our values. You know, so we need to come to some way to build this ecosystem. Here's another alternative future. We could have a thousand flowers bloom, to use a, a quote from somebody discredited now, we could all be rooted in a common core. We could have a common heritage. Apache can become one player among many. Apache Hadoop can kind of be the reference core. And a community migrates to an ecosystem. But people get, who are using it get a predictable thing. We, we welcome innovation of many kinds, not just the one kind of Apache innovation. We have many developmental models. People can develop software in many different ways. And we can have many winners. It's like a bike race. They have different jerseys. Not everybody has to get across the line at the first time. Some people sprint. Some people climb. Some people win. Some people are team members. There's many winners because there's many different ways to win. And we could do that. We can all win. We can all not win. And we, the question is, what kind of ecosystem are we going to have? We could be, have a totally mercenary, totally lethal, totally private ecosystem, and which company does this best? Think monkey boy. How many winners will there be? We choose one, zero, or a very large number. There are only three large, three nice numbers. Zero, it won't happen. One, this is the only way it happens, or basically unlimited. It could happen any kind of way you like. And we choose which one of those three we're going to have. I like the last one. We could build a very human collaborative ecosystem, which is an outgrowth of the Apache style, so that the default interaction is fairly collaborative. And we have to manage whether companies dominate that or if they begin to fit in as, as useful members of this ecosystem. And so the key task that we have is we find common ground. There are things that people agree on. They don't understand. We don't understand. Somebody else doesn't understand. But in fact, there are common goals. They'll be said differently. 
They will mean different things to different people, but there are common goals, and it's an extremely difficult task. We have to find them. And we have several alternative universes. One is the big crash. It's the inverse to the Big Bang. We have a positive curvature universe, and time-like paths are closed. The universe expands, and then it collapses to massive singularity. Notice the initials. That's not a good one. We could have an inflationary multiverse. The, 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 the universe expands in some unbounded way. Things become separated more and more, and the light cones separate. So everybody lives in their own universe, and it's very cold. It's very lonely. We have no critical mass. Nothing really happens anymore. Entropy is maximum. Do you remember CPM? No, because they don't communicate with us anymore. They seem in a distant galaxy. Well, we could wind up in that universe if, if we don't maintain this critical mass, if we don't keep things flowing back in. Or we could have kind of the green ecosystem, happy universe. We have zones of common interest where they're possible. I mean, maybe you know, Christian there and I have something we want to do. Maybe Cloudera wants to work with somebody else on one pro project but not another. There are common things. And most importantly, the common goal is that we avoid the heat death or the big crash universe. That's the real common goals that we have, and we have to really work on that. We probably need a little bit of formal structure. I know that Stefan and a few others are proposing that we build something bigger than just a community, that, that there are relationships between non-human entities involved. Uh, he calls it a consortium. I don't know what it should be called, what it is, but there probably should be some formality to that. And Apache should definitely participate as a major member, but it's not the right structure for that because it has individuals, not corporate entities. It doesn't recognize, well, it does recognize, it's a business-friendly open source, but it doesn't recognize the participation of these other kinds of entities, really. And so we also need to make, remind companies, and you know, I, I work for one, there's no doubt about that. Remember that logo down at the bottom. Uh, companies need to recognize where the golden egg came from and where the rest of the golden eggs are going to be coming from. Grant Ingersoll was at dinner the other night, and he said that he just hammers the guys inside. If it weren't for Apache, we wouldn't be here, he says, he says over and over and over again. And I think that's a really good thing to be saying inside of corporations. If it weren't for Apache, we wouldn't be here. And so we ought to just, you know, it's not like another company where you just kind of beat them up however you can. It really is... These people gave us things, and we need to, to give that back. And individuals need to also see, uh, you know, the individual developers need to see how incredibly effective a totally focused small team of people can be. And they, they could totally reorganize things. They could rebuild major chunks, and they may want to keep that for themselves, but that still should be built in such a way that we can make the universe work better. And then we get to universal domination by the good guys, or universal-ish. So what do we have now? We've got open source, we've got commercial tools, we've got commercial support, we've got radical surgery going on, we've got major corporate usage. Uh, open source from all the patchy things, from others, we've got tiny kind of inactive projects like Mesos and Plume, we've got academic things like Twister and Spark, there's just all kinds of stuff happening. We have commercial tools, Datamere, Karmasphere, Katanga, Cascading. Uh, there's, there's a bunch of these. I didn't name nearly enough of them. Uh, we have support and press, professional services, Cloudera's, Impetus in India. Think Big Analytics is doing a lot of interesting government stuff. Digital Reasoning is, is doing some interesting things. Booz Allen, you know, these guys wear ties. They actually, they, people like that exist. Uh, Booz Allen and IBM are very effective at selling to people who think, uh, think glaciers move quickly. Uh, it takes a very long attention span to sell to an organization that moves at those time scales. Uh, they're doing quite well at that. Uh, under the radical surgery uh, side of things, MAPR, we've rebuilt major chunks of, of Hadoop. We get very high performance. Uh, Datastax has thrown away big chunks and, and taken a very different model. It remains to be seen how good that's going to work. Uh, Spark has taken it to interactive 
real-time sorts of things where data remains in memory. Uh, there's a lot of radical surgery going on. We have major users. Everybody remembers Twitter, Facebook, and Yahoo, of course. But there's many others whose names we cannot mention. There are some that have three letters in their names, and they're kind of secret. Uh, there's many others who are corporate, and they think that the fact that they're using Hadoop is a major competitive secret. Give me a break, guys. Uh, as, as if that is something new. And there's this horde of what I might call leprechauns uh, who would like to be using Hadoop. Right now, 10-node, 5-node clusters for Hadoop aren't very useful, but they should be. They should be five or 10 times better than one machine. And so there's all these little people you know, popping out of the word work, and there should be an entire long tail, and there's beginning to be, of small-ish applications, bigger than small, but not as big as huge. All of these leprechauns are coming out of the woodwork. Um, and so these, 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 these are the forces that are, that are happening. And this is leading to conflicts. Who could guess? Well, there's humans involved here. We have the fundamental one of stressing agility or stressing stability. And forms of that are a pinned versus the alternative technical approach of no way. I had a, a friend who had a two-year-old uh, who coined that phrase for me. Uh, you know, he was sitting there saying, no, it's time to go to bed. And, no, it's time to go to bed. This friend of mine is just so reasonable and calm. It's time to go to bed now because we all need to go to bed. <laughs> we can do this the hard way or the easy way. And the response from the two-year-old was, no way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, we, we have a little bit of that going on in our community. Uh, the local right path versus no way. Uh, the, the no way guys are, are, are all worried about stability because they've been screwed badly in the past by these changes. Uh, major forklift, somebody, us, makes major changes. Well, is that Hadoopish or is it derivative or what? Uh, other people are saying, wait a minute, you know, we're really important here. We're Apache. You know, they've, they've, they've contributed and things like that, but they kind of forgot that that isn't the whole world. Uh, proprietary versus open source. There's a conflict there. And uh, what is Apache? Different people describe it different ways. But we have common ground. How many people here believe that an expanding universe is good for us? That's good. I think pretty much everybody, if I actually let you have time to raise your hands, would raise your hands. Allowing innovation, I think. Allowing it. Not just doing it, but allowing it. Don't shut it down before it happens. Allowing innovation, I think, is good, and I think we all agree with that. Now, not all of us want to write checks and support it, but I think it's good that somebody writes a check and supports innovation in, in the Hadoop and big data world. And I think it's really good to inspire innovation. One way to do that is have somebody write a check and a big proprietary thing happens and somebody else goes, hey, I could do that. Uh, well, maybe they can, maybe they can't. I, I think that they, they, they might well be able to do something quite interesting. And that inspiration of competition or the inspiration of somebody saying, well, yes, that's a great idea, is good. And I think supporting different uses is good. So can't we just all get along? Well, the answer to that's obviously no. <laughs> we can't. We really can't at some level. Uh, because there are things that are fundamentally disagreeing. That's why it's an ecosystem, not a community. Community could get along. And an ecosystem is going to have some lions and some lambs, and some of the lambs are going to get eaten. But there are places where we can agree. We can agree where it just doesn't freaking matter. We can agree where there are places where we could come together. And we can admit that there are inevitabilities here. We have an ecosystem now. It can be functional or dysfunctional. We can make it work, but it isn't what it was. The world is different, and the world will be different from what it used to be. And it's never going to be that again. It's never going to be a small thing. We've seen this over and over again. You know, network news, gee, that was great because it's all people like me. They all talk to me, and they're all good behaving people and they do all creative things like they put a header line that says the, this is the moon phase when I posted it. So, oh, wasn't that a wonderful thing? And then all these AOL people came around. Uh, uh, 
You know, the world's different. Well, it's never going to go back to before the great renaming. Or the internet, where, you know, you had people who could recite every IP address that had been assigned. It's not going to go back to that, I hope. Uh, it's not going to go back to where somebody could agree, well, we screwed up, we updated all of the ARPANET imps, let's reboot them all at the exact same time. It's not going to happen again. Those were good times, but they aren't going to be there again. And it was very cool times when it was just Apache or just a few guys making this stuff happen. But it isn't going to be like that again. But we really can have this truly astonishing world, which is much more than that. And we need to find ways to make that so. So I'm going to stop early because I think it's always important that the audience speak. Here's my contact information. You have five seconds. And of course, these will be available later. Uh, my name is virtually all of these contact points. But we can, uh, we need another real time update. Uh, pound sign buzz, Ted. Uh, anybody here who's near a computer, there may be a few of those, uh, can tweet onto that and we'll, we'll answer some questions. We can, we can t carry on the conversation. And I'm hoping somebody's been taking some notes on the shared document there. Let's see what's happened. This is an experiment. Isn't that exciting? Uh, we're all scientists now. Uh, so let's see. Uh, find out which way the, the big world is. 78 more results. Well, yeah, somebody's been tweeting. Uh, Why should it help to have companies that cannot be represented? That's, Thorsten always says cool things. Uh, why should it help that, that we don't have companies that are represented by individuals? And in fact, this is kind of a special case of the, you know, what you might call the ambassador theorem. I mean, countries do that. They send a legate. The, 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 the Vatican sends a nuncio. We send an ambassador. Well, that ambassador doesn't really represent the country, the country does things other than that, and that person cannot decide for the country. These are corporate interests. Uh, people talk about the singularity. I think the singularity was happened in 1640 or whatever in Amsterdam when joint stock companies were invented. Uh, these entities exist in our world, and they are non-human. They do not think like humans, and they have to be considered as such. And I think that having an individual who supposedly represents them is fictitious. And it's dangerous that way. I'm happy to be at Apache. I'm happy to try to represent my company. But they aren't me, and I'm not them. It. Him. New, whatever new uh, pronoun we could have. Uh, why obsess about Apache if these small teams are cool? It's because many different models are important. I think that's absolutely true. Uh, the small commercial teams are great, but they're going to want to keep their stuff to themselves. Uh, I'm, I'm an example of that. Uh, but then there are other teams who would like to keep things open. And so there are multiple models there. Uh, why is Apache not the right structure? Well, this, I think, is a great. That's obscene, that little picture there. I'm shocked. Uh, why isn't Apache the right structure? Well, Apache is a, is a group of individuals. Torsten's question comes to the fore. And frankly, Apache is a great example. And, and the fact that Apache seems completely right to a lot of us and completely incomprehensible to the corporate guy who's coin operated. I think that that is the reason that Apache is not the right structure, is because there's a lot of people in the world who cannot understand why anybody would do that. But they do have motivations, and they can understand why they would do things. And it's probably important to a Hadoop, the ecosystem, that those people also participate. They cannot participate in Apache because it makes no sense. And that's the real problem with Apache as the overarching, uh, overarching solution. 
any others? Uh, no, nobody's tweeting. That's that's incredible. This this is an odd thing. Uh, thank you about the beer on the train story. Um, okay, so let's take a look at the document. Um, damn, I have too many windows open. Never going to find that thing. Uh, still have too many open. Uh, how did this happen? Keynote notes. Hey, here we go. We have 28 others editing this document. Isn't that exciting as well? This green button, I think, could be very handy right now. OK, so what do we got in there? Uh, somebody wants to talk about machine learning. Well, they know my, my fiercely bad tendencies that I'll talk about machine learning at any time. But I'm going to control myself right now. So let, let's talk about that afterwards. Uh, I'd love to do that. Uh, big data bringing disruption to industry. No kidding. And I think Doug had the best quote there, that we have big data because we have tools like Hadoop, not the other way around. And the, the disruption is the arrival of science to business. Until now, it's been very intuitive and, and very clever people in an evolving world. Uh, all of them thought that they were uh, clever, and some of them were, and some of them were lucky. And by evolution, the ones who were clever or were lucky survived. And so up to now, we've had kind of this, this evolutionary aspect of industry and so on. But now industry can measure. And so the new cleverness is measuring things and making things work better based on measurements. And unfortunately for some philosophies, that means that big is more effective than sm lots of small, because aggregation of data becomes super linearly valuable rather than lots of small silos. But yeah, there's an awful lot of stuff happening there. Uh, Thomas Koch, good. Yes, we are building the, 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 the seeds of privacy disruption. But how many, I mean, we came from small villages or small tribes where everybody knew way too much about us. And some of them were very powerful. The, the kings of ancient Egypt had secret services, things like that. And then we had this moment in time where humans spread around. They, 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 they kept going to new places and things like that, where privacy became a concept. And we're going back to a world where these non-human entities know as much about us as the members of our village used to know. So yeah, we are building the tools for loss of privacy. Uh, you know, if you just look at, at what your cell phone is telling the world about you, it, it's right here. And they could almost measure that I, when I walk to the left side of the stage. Now, you all know that, but, but I'd really rather not tell everybody in the world. Well, the game's over. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it is. Uh, we should be responsible, yeah, we should be responsible, but engineers don't have the final responsibility there. Successful business entities have the final responsibility, and they aren't human. They aren't going to think like we think they should think. Uh, what is INDECT? I don't know what it is. What is it? Somebody tell me. So it's a un, uh, European initiative to collect all kinds of, of databases using, of course, uh, uh, Hadoop and, and all kinds of things. Well, yeah, that's going to happen. Uh, and you know, the US government's the one that's usually vilified for doing that. Uh, but others are doing it, uh, some probably more effectively. Uh, anybody been to China lately? Uh, yeah, there, there, there's all kinds of things like that. It would be nice if those were only used for good we know that this is a hard world, and we know that there will be evil people in it. So we have to try to collectively be human and avoid misuse. But there will be misuse and, uh, and good uses. And so we have to work for that. Uh, Thomas Koch seems to type rather a lot. Uh, clear concept of con separation of concepts and interpretation. That's really important. Uh, there already is some separation that way, 
but I don't think that uh, there's nearly enough separation. Uh, HDFS, for instance, is this infectious concept where people delve very deeply into it and they don't, uh, they don't really separate those things. Uh, MapReduce equals Hadoop. Well, even, even in Mahout, where we explicitly say it's scalable data mining, everybody thinks that that's Hadoop. Ooh, thank you. <laughs> I've often said that the internet is the medium that uh, shoots back. And, and I think we see that here. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the wall is a little bit weak on that. Uh, can this really change? I say no. Uh, we just have to deal with that. Uh, What's the difference? Oh, well, come on. Oh, we have a lot of happy people now. Uh, we just don't realize what's happening. We, we, a lot of us still think that Apache is the world. It, it's a nice thought, but it isn't true. So the only difference is I think that five years from now we'll all know that. And some of us will be very unhappy about it. Some of us will be very happy about that in, in coin-operated ways. And, and some of us have, will have found ways to work within that. Uh, a green software consortium. Well, you know, I don't think that there's been uh, anything like Hadoop before in terms of the community and, and the world that it's making. Uh, Apache software has been uh, prolific in the past. Uh, HTTPD, Tomcat are both well-known and famous. Uh, but they did not enable the level of commercial opportunity in many ways that the, uh, the Hadoop world has. And those are subtle differences because people did sell effectively Tomcat in, in our incarnations. They did sell for a tiny period of time HTTPD. But this is real different. And I don't entirely understand why, but it, it really is different. And I've never seen open source software do what Hadoop is doing. Uh, not that I've been paying attention perfectly. Uh, does anybody have any examples of that? Sure. I'll repeat it. So he says, a group uh, left Oracle to continue developing Lustre. Yeah, and um, I, I mean, at, um, at, at around that time, a, a group of companies came together um, um, to form a, a community to fund the ongoing development of Lustre. Um, at the same time, um, Actually, another community started. Um, the, the, there was kind of a community war for a while. Um, and uh, over this last year, they've actually managed to sit down. We've managed to get the individuals to sit down at a table and talk to each other and, and, um, and, and, and come to a compromise and, and actually agree on, on uh, unifying the community. So now we're in a position where we do have um, a unified um, uh, well, a, a set of commercial entities um, that actually agree on a, on a path forward and are, and are interested in, in seeing the ongoing survival of Lustre as an open source and vendor neutral development. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't have to repeat that uh, because I don't think I'd remember. But that's, that's a different thing. Uh, there have definitely been industrial consortia in the past. USB uh, is an example of that. Ethernet's an example of that. NFS is an example of that. MP3, all of the MPEG working groups. There's innumerable examples of how people got together as corporations and, and were able to work out standards and make agreements of, of that sort, uh, where they said, well, we won't totally screw you on this. We'll save this other thing that we'll nuke you with. Uh, and we can all work together so we can make the world bigger. So that's not a new concept for corporations to do that. But I don't think that any of those have ever been centered around an open source project. And I think certainly if there are where corporations have really taken open source very seriously and come to agreements on that, I mean, uh, HTTP itself might be, or, or HTML might be examples of that. But they don't have the same kind of commercialization that uh, Hadoop now has. Those were abstract standards. They were not individual things that people were then reselling. Nobody was reselling HTML. They were 
pushing browsers. They were selling browsers for a tiny bit. They were using browsers to steamroll other industries and so on. And they were kind of agreeing on, on global standards, but then screwing everybody on them. Uh, th that I don't think is an example of, uh, of what this person's asking about, is where an open source community has done the kind of thing that Hadoop is doing, and there's been a consortium. There have been consortiums. It's not a new concept. Right, right. This isn't just a commercial consortium, but there yeah. are commercial players involved in it. Yeah, but, but how many hundreds of millions of dollars is Luster driving in revenues? Sure, sure. And sure. I mean, it, it's, it's a different scale. It's, it's probably on the sort of 200 odd, something like that. Yeah, and so the, the difference is when those coins start appearing, the coin operated people appear. Oh, there, there are those. And, and that <laughs> becomes community. a very different sort of world very quickly. Uh, friction seems to cause. Absolutely, it is. Uh, well, and deja vu uh, with Maven isn't even, we've seen this before. We're seeing it right now. Uh, there, there's definitely friction that, that's happening there. Uh, now a list of successful. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, <laughs> it is a key concern. So how do we avoid that? What's happened in the past before who was able to misuse consortia, say, Triple uh, W? Uh, who was able to embrace and extend? Um, that was an interesting thing. Yeah, it'll all be solved by putting me on the board. Uh, Doug, how's that worked out for you? Uh, you solved everything, right? <laughs> that was hard. Uh, Ellen. Set. Well, it was a five minute warning and I also I have a question. Oh, you do, okay. Do. Use the microphone. Hello. <laughs> so one of your Twitter questions earlier, I think said something to the effect of what's the difference between you know, the great positive future or happy world you're talking about and what's happening now. And I think what I've heard in your talk is that you're saying that the world outside is changing. There are these larger players. Um, it's going to change whether Apache wants it to change or not, and that the involvement of Apache community in that as a major player can make that be a very positive world. And if that's part of your message, my question is, are there specific uh, action items or, or a call to action here, very specific things that you recommend for the Hadoop community and for the Apache community and the larger community to think about taking very specific things um, so that that does go forward in, in the sort of positive way that you've suggested as a possible future. I, I should have a signal so that when somebody says specific actions, I can get them to cut off their microphone. Those are very hard questions. Uh, but th there's a couple points in there. One is Apache acting as a corporate entity, effectively, or as a collective entity. Apache is individuals. It's an interesting, subtle point about the composition, the, the corporate makeup of Apache, which is, it, is itself a corporation, but it's a very odd one. Uh, so Apache is individuals. Apache cannot really act corporately, uh, either, or either actually or uh, effectively. So that, that's one issue there. And as far as specific concrete actions, I think that the world is really complicated now. And I would be presumptuous, really presumptuous, to say what each person in this room should do. I don't think specific actions are the right thing to say here. I think philosophical actions are the right thing to say. You know, we need to think about what's happening to this world, think about which world do we want to have happen, and try to understand people outside our kin who do not think the way we do, uh, or, you know, I've, I've lived in kind of academic and industrial worlds, and when I talk to one group of people, I talk like them. When I talk to another group, I talk like them. And I find it's hard in my own head to understand those two modes of action because they are so foreign. And it's really hard to think about them. You have to think about them. It's very difficult to do. Uh, you know, if you can confuse yourself within one head, how hard is it going to be to understand a thousand heads? So we have to do that. And that's the specific action. Think hard about what's happening and think hard about the, the bigger picture of, of what's happening and, and how we can make that work better. Uh, should I refresh again or should we go back to the, the document? Can 
I find the document? Why are the slides l marked confidential? That's because I didn't finish them until this morning. And I figured that taking the confidentiality thing was off was something I would do after the talk instead of before the talk. Thank you for asking a quick question. Uh, leprechaun adoption. There are technical, there are serious technical problems to leprechauns. Uh, I've always wanted to say that. Uh, the problems with leprechauns is that Hadoop doesn't make sense until you get around 20 nodes. And until six months ago, there were bizarre bugs where if you had six nodes, you could have major failure modes just because there were so few. There were many assumptions baked into Hadoop that there were a large number of machines in the cluster. And so there were statistical ways that failures could actually become more likely when you had fewer machines rather than more likely as you would kind of expect. And the, it's a very natural thing. I mean, uh, who, who did this stuff was to some degree people who were paid to do this and the people who paid them to do it were not the people who had small clusters for the most part. Facebook, Yahoo, uh, uh, Cloudera lately uh, have funded developers to do this and of those three, for instance, only Cloudera had any access to the needs of small cluster people, all the leprechauns. And so the leprechauns have been ignored for a lot over time. And I think that those, that's going to change radically because there's a long tail. The number of small applications is vastly larger than the number of large applications. And there's this no man's land right now between things that fit on one machine and things that fit and, and do well on 20 machines or above. And that, that, that gap in there is where the leprechauns are. That's why you can't see them. Uh, and, and that'll be fixed as commercial interests get in and they say, oh, there's lots of people there. Uh, so let's, let's wander. Uh, hey, look at that. That worked. That's so cool. Uh, I knew I couldn't come up with all of these. Uh, I wouldn't have known these. Shopzilla, those guys. I know those guys. Uh, Amazon, I've heard of them. Uh, you know, I've heard of these guys and I don't know about it, so that's great. Yeah, uh, crappy note takers. Micro economy driven ecosystem. Werner Vingy has done a lot of interesting thoughts about this. He's also talked about the implications of smart dust, and it's a good idea, but it's not what we're talking about. Uh, more questions, anybody say? I think that's uh, kind of coming toward a, uh, an asymptotic uh, end of it then. Uh, I'm really glad everybody, oh, there's 11 new tweets. This is, here goes. <laughs> I like your persistence. <laughs> he still thinks individuals. Uh, the last, how come you're not a cowboy? Riding the range, that sort of thing, the great individualist. Uh, well, uh, yeah, that, that's an interesting thing, okay. Is Apache like Mozilla? No. <laughs> Anybody who's dealt with both? And is Hadoop and big data like the web? Well, big data maybe, but Hadoop is not like the web. Hadoop is, is not like other things. It, it really has very different sorts of uh, stuff. I'm going to say thank you here. Let's, uh, let's waste some time in the hallways. Uh, that's always the best place for discussion. It's never so good to have one person in the front elevated above everybody else. Uh, so let's talk about machine learning. Let's talk about fun things uh, uh, as we uh, go on throughout the day. Thank you so much for coming and listening to me. <laughs>